Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Starting this weekend, we are going to make a few videos on different belt printers and conveyor belt conversion kits for your regular 3D printer. A high-end industrial belt printer like the Black Belt can cost you $15,000, while a DIY open source White Knight can cost you $1,500 to $2,000 to build. However, Naomi Wu and Creality launched the CR30 or the 3D Print Mill, which cost just around $1,000. Since then, we have started to see belt printers available in the market for under $1,000. Today, I will test out this Ideaformer IR3 printer, which costs just around $600. It's a core XY printer with linear rails on the X and Y axis, and the Z axis is a conveyor belt. It has a print volume of 250 by 250 with the infinite Z axis. The price and specifications of this printer look pretty good to me, at least on paper. I would like to thank Ideaformer for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the gantry, the power supply, the motherboard placed inside this box like the CR10, the print head, filament holder, a roll of sample filament, two sets of brackets to mount the gantry to the base, and some tools. To attach the gantry to the base, we need to install these 45 degree brackets on the gantry first. Align the bottom of the extrusion and the bracket in a straight line and tighten the screws. Do the same to the other side, and make sure both sides are aligned like this. Then, we can put the gantry on the base and tighten the screws. Use the 90 degree triangle acrylic tool to check the angle. If there is no gap between the triangle and the aluminum extrusions, the angle is perfectly 45 degrees. If not, loosen the screws to adjust it. Do the same to the other side. If the angle of both sides is perfect, install another set of brackets to secure the gantry. Next, we will install the extruder, which is a BMG clone. Put the thumb screw, spring, and washer together, and screw them into the screw hole on the lever to apply tension to the gears inside. Screw in the Bowden tube coupler at the top. Mount it on the left side of the gantry using one screw at the top and one at the bottom. We can now install the print head, insert it into the X carriage plate, and tighten four screws from the back to secure it. If the gantry is a perfect 45 degrees, the angle of the print head would also be 45 degrees to the print head. Insert the Bowden tube to connect the extruder and the print head. We can connect some cables, starting with the filament sensor, then the extruder stepper motor, and hide the cable inside the slot of the extrusion. Go to the back of the machine, connect the Y stepper motor, the X stepper motor, and the Y limit switch, which is next to the X stepper motor. Connect the black cable from the print head to the electronic enclosure, followed by the blue and red cable. Connect the other end of the red and blue cable to the machine. Finally, mount the filament holder on the left side of the machine. Adjust the knob on the print bed and tighten them all the way by turning them clockwise. Then, loosen up one circle by turning them counterclockwise to leave some room for adjustment. Now we can turn on the machine. First, select Auto Home. The print head will go left to hit the X limit switch, and then the gantry will move down to the bed until it hits the Y limit switch. Use the paper test to adjust the bed to let the nozzle slightly scratch the paper. If you turn the knob four circles to raise the bed, do the same to the knob at the back to keep them at the same level. Then, move the nozzle to the right side of the gantry to do the same. Move the X-axis left and right, and you should get a similar scratch feel the whole time. 
If the nozzle is too far away from the bed when you do auto home the first time, it's difficult to get the perfect distance as the bed can't be raised up that much. In this case, you need to adjust the Y limit switch at the back to move the limit switch lower in order to bring the nozzle closer to the bed for adjustment. Now, the printer should be ready to print. I will print the calibration cube sample G-code from the SD card. It seems the distance between the nozzle and the bed is perfect, and the line sticks pretty well on the bed. The cube looks fine, but it is a little different from the cubes we normally see from regular 90 degree printers. The layer lines on the Y axis are all 45 degrees. Next, I will go to the computer and install the Idea Maker slicer that came with the SD card. Just use default settings to complete the installation. Okay, it asks me to choose the look, and I will just choose the white theme. Then, we need to add the printer. Select other third-party printers, scroll down to Idea Former, and select the IR3. Press the download button to download the printer profile, and then select Import to Idea Maker. Choose Import as a new printer. We can now close all these windows and import a 3D Benchy from our computer. Generally, we need to adjust the printing angle for this belt printer, but let's just position the Benchy like how we would do with a regular printer and see what happens. Do a preview, and it should print at a 45 degree angle like this. As you can see, the side of the Benchy doesn't look good. Everything above this line is considered overhanging, so if we want to print like this, we need to add support. So, it would be better to rotate it 90 degrees. It still starts with slight overhanging, but it's not as steep as the side surface. Okay, this time the Benchy looks much better, and other than these two overhanging parts, the rest is all pretty good. Another way to print with this printer is to print everything at 45 degrees, so I will make a base for the Benchy. It will print layer by layer from bottom to top, like a regular printer. However, since I don't want to make the base larger than the Benchy and waste even more filament, this small base may not be secure enough to stick to the bed. As the weight distribution is uneven, this side will be heavier and gravity may lift it up from the bed. But let's try it anyways and see what happens. I tried to print a few of them, but none of them were successful until I applied some glue to the bed. These are all the Benchies I have printed and other failed prints. Then I will print a sign. I will scale it up to 700 millimeters long, and since the y-axis and the z-axis of this belt printer is reversed, for printing any model with text, the text will be mirrored. So, we actually need to mirror the x-axis to make it print normally. If I choose the mirror x-axis from the menu, it will actually print like this. I will rotate it 90 degrees to print this side first. When you look at the screen, it's mirrored, but when it actually prints, the printer will mirror it again to make it normal. The height of the belt is a little bit taller than a filament box, so I will just put a few boxes at the end to support the print. 
This sign prints pretty well, and the length is actually longer than two CR-10S Pro V2 printers combined. Next, I will enlarge this cargo ship to 200%, which is 450 millimeters long. In order to save some printing time, I will use 0.3 millimeter layer height instead of 0.2, so it will take about 18 hours. The print will start building from this corner. This part may be a problem, as it is just printing in the air, but if I add support, I would probably damage it when removing the support. But the rest of the print should be fine, so I will just print it without using any support and see how it goes. Here comes the part I'm worried about. It's not looking good, but it doesn't affect the rest of the print. Printing at a 0.3mm layer doesn't look as good as 0.2mm, but the other details of the ship look okay, so I would much rather save 12 hours of printing time to get this reasonable result. Finally, I will duplicate 8 dice and let it print continuously. All of them were printed successfully without any bed adhesion issues, but for small parts like this, it would be better to use a regular 90 degree printer. After testing it out for around 10 days, I got some great prints but also some failed prints. Let's talk about what I think about this printer, starting with the pros. The assembly is very simple and is much easier than I expected. It just took a few simple steps to put everything together. For bed leveling, you need to turn the knob to raise or lower the bed and adjust the Y-axis limit switch by turning a screw at the back, so it's just similar to leveling a printer without an auto bed leveling sensor. The linear rails work great. I saw that some users upgraded their Creality CR30 to have linear rails, but this printer already came with that for a lower price, which is awesome. For the print surface, the belt is the same material as the CR30, which is thermal-resistant nylon. It sticks okay, and it doesn't stick as well as a textured PEI sheet, but it sticks pretty well with all different PLA I have tested on this printer. I didn't need to use the glue stick that came with the printer, except for the 45-degree printed Benchy, as it had an uneven weight distribution that may have required some extra help to avoid being lifted up from the bed by gravity. However, I really don't recommend using glue, as using it on a textured surface like this belt is not easy to clean up. The manufacturer includes the source code of the firmware on the SD card. It's using standard Marlin 2.0.9, so it's pretty easy to make changes. I have already made some changes, including reversing the encoder to change the direction of the knob on the LCD screen, adding baby stepping to adjust the height of the nozzle in real time, and adjusting the home menu and preheat constants, which I normally like to do with other printers using the LCD screen. As for the cons, it prints slower than a regular printer. For a 3D Benchy, an Ender 3 would take around 1 hour and 15 minutes to finish, but on this belt printer, it took 2 hours and 15 minutes to get one with good print quality. The difference is not huge, but expecting 20-25% to more time to print the same model should be a reasonable estimate. The stepper drivers are all TMC2208 silent drivers, but the motherboard uses an AT Mega 2560 8-bit processor. It's the same chip used by the Prusa MK3S Plus. It is still good enough for handling 3D printing G-code, but it doesn't come with a bootloader, so when updating firmware, you need to connect the printer to your computer using a USB cable. Unlike working with a 32-bit board, you just need to copy the firmware bin file to the SD card, turn on the machine, and it will be uploaded automatically. Additionally, the direction of the knob to control the LCD screen is reversed. Normally, we expect that when we turn the knob clockwise, the menu goes down, the selection goes right, and the numbers increase. However, this printer was reversed by default. Just enabling one line of code in the firmware to reverse it is not that hard, but it would be better to set the direction to be the same as what most people are used to by default. 
the nylon belt generally sticks well with TLA, but doesn't stick quite as well with other material, and the manufacturer also recommends just printing PLA, so you may not be able to print with different materials like a regular 3D printer. I would also like to give two suggestions to the manufacturer. First, the nozzle of this hot end has the same M6 threads as most common nozzles for an MK8 or V6 hot end. It's more like an MK8, but the length of the threads is longer than the MK8. The length of the V6 Volcano hot end is long enough for this hot end, but it cannot print at 45 degrees. So, a standard MK8 or V6 nozzle will not fit this hot end. The manufacturer has spare parts available at their eBay and AliExpress stores, but I can only see 0.4mm nozzles, which may not be enough. For printing larger models, I would prefer using 0.6 or even 0.8 nozzles to save some printing time. I hope the manufacturer will have nozzles with different diameters available soon. The second one is a big one. As all 45 degree belt printers are not as easy to use as regular 90 degree printers, for some models, it may not be able to print as well as a normal 90 degree printer. So, I would suggest making a foldable gantry with a set of hinges as well as an adjustable print head angle and two different firmwares for the user to switch from 45 or 90 degree mode using the screen menu depending on what they need to print. So, this design can take advantage of the infinite Z-axis conveyor belt to print long models and the easy to use and better print quality of a regular 3D printer. In conclusion, I am quite happy with the build quality, the linear rail core XY kinematic, and the belt is aligned perfectly. I don't have to do any adjustments, just spend some time doing bed leveling and adjusting the Y limit switch height. Of course, you still need to slice the model at an optimal angle for it to print well. If you are a beginner, it may not be the best idea to get this as your first printer, especially if this will be your only printer. Like all other 45 degree belt printers, they have limitations. They are good at printing long objects and can also do continuous printing, but there are some extra factors you need to consider. For example, how and where you add supports, whether the model is suitable for 45 degree printing or not, and how you arrange the angle and the position in the slicer. Printing with a belt printer has a longer learning curve. However, it's really fun to print long models that cannot be printed by other regular printers. Anyways, at the price of around $600, this is a pretty good platform for you to start belt printing. Some stock parts like the extruder, hot end, or the Bowden tube may not be the exact parts you want, but it's quite easy to replace them, just like how you do mods and upgrades to a regular 3D printer. After I did all the test prints, I kept changing the extruder and the hot end to find a better combination. I ended up using the stock hot end with the My 3D OMG extruder, which seemed to work the best. If you are interested in this printer, I put the links under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.